Okay, we're going to go on to Unit 2, Day 2B, so more with power functions. Um, now we're going to do it with um, variation and modeling. So if you remember, probably in Algebra 2, um, you, sh you did some directly direct variation and inverse variation. A uh, big idea here, uh, direct variation, if it's directly proportional, it means as one amount increases, another amount would increase at the same rate. Um, so some ideas of this would be, um, say the size of a gas tank versus the cost to fill it. And the bigger it is, the more it's going to cost. And it, if you have twice the gas tank, twice the cost. So it's going to be the exact same rate. Um, uh, maybe the, the cost of a taxi fare versus the distance, you know. Um, I'll write that down real quick. Um, so and what it is is... What that whatever there's some constant that that as one goes up the other one goes up but there's some constant that kind of keeps it in check so that's what that this k is there's this constant and that's it right here so maybe y is always half of k maybe y is always double k maybe y equals k you know, if k is one that means it's just a one um, now inversely is kind of the opposite it means when one value decreases at the same rate that the other one increases. So these are a little bit harder to find, but you might say the, the miles driven in a car compared to the gas that's left. So as the more miles you've driven since your last fill up, the less gas you have left. So as one goes up, the other one goes down. Um, or speed versus the time to arrive. Um, two hours in that, yeah. I'm a terrible speller. Um, so speed versus time to arrive. So the faster you go, the less time it takes to get there. Um, so let's look at these situations here. Um, it says label each as direct or inverse variation. So just think as one goes up, is the other variable going up or going down? So the distance traveled as a function of speed. So if you're going faster, does the distance travel go up or go down? Well, if you're going faster, you're going to cover more distance. So that'd be direct. There's some constant in between that decides, you know, how that is. And if you're going 60 miles per hour, how much distance you're going versus, you know, if you're going to multiply it by, in this, you know, in this case, it might be the time, you know, you think uh, rate times time equals distance, well, distance and um, distance traveled and rate, well, T is going to be that K in between that's deciding how they're being multiplied. Uh, the total cost is a function of the number of items purchased, so would the total cost go up or down as you buy more items? Well, it, it would go up as you buy more items. So that is direct. Uh, the area of a circular swimming pool as a function of its radius. Uh, so if the radius goes up, what's going to happen to the area of the swimming pool? Well, it's also going to go up. So that'd be direct. Sorry for all the direct. Direct is actually easier to come up with. Uh, the number of posts in a 20-foot fence as a function of the distance between the posts. Okay, so if I space the post out, will I need more posts or less posts? Well, I'll end up being less. So as the distance increases, the number of posts decreases. So that's inverse. Okay. Uh, some examples. Um, and we're just using these equations up here. So y equals kx, y equals k divided by x. Um, y is directly proportional to x. So as soon as I hear that, I think y equals k times x. They tell us that when x is 3, y is 15. The reason why they're telling us that is so we can find the k. What's the thing that relates them together? So when x is 3, y is 15. So if I'm going to have to solve for k, just divide by 3, and k would equal 5. So the constant of proportionality is 5. For some reason, y is 5 times bigger than k, always. Uh, I'm sorry, y is always 5 times bigger than x. Okay. Um, so... Find y when x is 41, so that would be 5 times 41. Now, the, the equation that relates them together, by the way, would be 5x. Like That's your, um, your equation for this problem. And so y is going to equal 5 times 41, so y equals 205. Uh, for questions uh, 3 and 4, write a power function to model the situation. So... Uh, the surface area, S, of a sphere varies directly as a square of the radius. So the surface area, and it says S, I, I want to put an A there for surface area, but it says S, varies directly 
So it's going to equal k times the square of the radius. Now, if anybody, if you happen to remember this from geometry, um, what is that k? You know, in this real life situation, what is that k? Well, the it's uh, four pi. So if you happen to remember that, that, notice four pi is a constant. There's no variables in there. That's just a constant. That's the thing that if you multiply the r squared by, you get the surface area. So it's what relates them together. As the radius goes up, the sphere surface area goes up. The period of time t for a full swing of a pendulum varies directly as the square root of the pendulum's length. So you think if it has a short length, it's going to go back and forth pretty fast. Um, so the period is from from going to one side and coming back. Now, if it's a longer string, it's going to take longer to go back and forth. So it's directly proportional. So one increases, the other increases. But it says that the the time varies directly. So right off the bat, there's going to be a k in there. k times the square root of the length l. So the square root of l. And now they want this as a power function. I've got it written as a root. So i got to put t equals equals k l to the one half. Okay, so there's my, my power function form. Uh, the acceleration of a particle is inversely proportional. So right now I know that I've got um, the acceleration. So the acceleration is inversely proportional. So I got k divided by the square of the time since it fired. So the square of the time. Now you want to rewrite this as a power function. So this would be a equals k, and then this would be t to the negative 2 when I bring that up. Okay, so now switching to the back side. Um, let's see here. The time it takes for a group of volunteers to build a house varies inversely as a number of volunteers. So it makes sense that if you have more people working, it's going to take less time. So like many hands make light work. So if you have more people... We have to do less work, and it happens faster. Um, so write a power function for the um, for the, the situation. So the time it takes varies inversely as in the number of volunteers v. And if I need to write this as a power function, t equals k v to the negative 1. Okay. Uh, part b, if 20 volunteers can build a house in 62.5 hours, that's pretty fast to build a house. Um, so I've got, so if 20 volunteers, so I'm going to do T equals, and I'm actually going to put it in this form right here. So I'm going to leave like that when I plug it in. So the 20 volunteers, so it'll be 20, K divided by 20 equals 62.5. So if I want to quickly just find my constant, so it says find the value of K first, I need to multiply those together. So K, um, in this case, is going to equal... 1250. So it looks like there's about 1,250 hours worth of work. If one person worked by themselves, it would take them about 1,250 hours. 1,250 hours. But now, what if I have 50 people? Um, how many volunteers would be needed for 50 working hours? So I say, I, I don't have 62 and a half hours. I only got 50 hours, and this thing's got to be done. So I'm going to put 50 hours in for a time. 1250 in for that constant, and I'm going to divide that by how many volunteers to get it done in 50 hours. So in this one, we're solving for V, which we're going to multiply V to both sides. So this would be V times 50 equals 1250, and then divide by 50. All that really happened there was, yeah, V equals 1250 over 50. It was kind of the trick. They just switched places. These two did. Switch them up. And that means it would take 25 volunteers. So if you get 25 volunteers, you can get this thing done um, in 50 hours. Okay, looking at this data, so for mammals and other warm-blooded animals, to stay warm um, requires quite a bit of energy. So temperature loss is related to surface area. The more surface area you have, um, you have more to lose. Um, but it's related to body weight, and temperature gain is related to uh, circulated circulation, which is related to pulse rate. Whew. So all these variables, but in the final analysis, these scientists concluded that the pulse rate, R, of mammals is a power function of their body weight. So what I'm going to do is try to find that power function. So I'm going to quickly, I'm going to put the, the data in my calculator. So you probably want to pause it here and put the data in. So put that data in the calculator. 
And I'm going to do a power function. Let me put this all in. Let's double check real quick. I got those numbers right. Um, so, so I want to do power regression. So that's under the same same category here. So let's go uh, stat over to calc. And if I keep going down here, there's power regression. So letter A, hit enter. List one, list two. I can store this. I'll go vars, y vars, y one. And then when you calculate this guy, there's our power function. So go ahead and write that down. Don't don't round too much. I don't know why I put. You got to round it eventually. It keeps going, but y equals two thirty one point two oh four. Well, we will round it. Broke my own rule. Um, we should put this too. That instead of y, this is actually predicting the pulse rate. May I'll put pulse rate. Remember, if I put a hat above it, that means it's predicted. If I put a little arrow above it, for those of you in stats, that makes perfect sense to you. And then the x value is body weight, so I'll put w to the um, negative 0.297. Okay, and then now, um, so there's my regression model. Now let's use your model from part A to predict the pulse rate for a 450 kilogram horse. So I'm going to predict my weight, so 231.204, I'm sorry, pulse rate, predict my pulse rate, so 450 to the negative 0.297. Probably the fast way to do this, I would graph it, and if you notice, why isn't the graph showing up? Um, it's because my y-axis is pulse, and my y-axis is in the hundreds here, hundreds and on down here, so it's going to be it's way up here somewhere. So I'm going to zoom, and let's go to zoom fit. Probably get tired of watching that. So if I just quickly trace this guy, I want to see how far my x values are going over here. So I'm going to type in an x value of 450, and um, my x value is going up to about. 10 right now, so I need to change my window because I, the, the calculator can only plug it in, or can only trace it if it's in its screen. So I'm going to change this maximum x value to about 460. Oh, better change my y value too. My y value, my y min, I'm just going to put 0 in there. So it's something like this. And now I'm going to hit trace and then type in 450. And that's going to be a little bit faster than typing it in. You could also just type it in the calculator. So 450 and I get 37. So the uh, predicted the predicted uh, pulse rate would be um, 37 point, I'll say 7. Yeah, we'll ignore the no rounding part. So it'll be beats, beats per minute. So you see, there's a regression for everything. Any kind of function you have, there's a regression for it, and your, your TI-84 can pretty much do it all.